Plasma Burst, Fall of Civil Security It has been four years since Correction 9 launched nuclear missiles and destroyed the world, but they failed. They could not defeat the leader of the evil organization and de deactivate the nuclear weapons. A lot of things have changed over the years. Noriko became a lieutenant in civil security, but not the most important. There were more than eight secret CS headquarters in the world, and each of them had its own unique detachments of soldiers. Not only, but not only one detachment was at the disposal of the headquarters, but more than a thousand people, infantrymen, scientists, programmers, and so on. The main character became even more mature and strong. He was 29 years old at the time. It doesn't sound very much, but for him this figure was quite a large. The team lacked two people, a sniper and another heavy soldier. Fortunately, such was found, the first and probably one of the most key figures in this story. This is Jack Swift. He was 36 years old, a man with extensive combat experience and a relatively strict character. There will be a story about him too. Just two weeks later, another recruit was found. He did not have a name, only the nickname that Ivan Streff gave him, Scout. But why a Scout? Well, because a sniper was young, or more precisely a child who was only 17 years old. This recruit was found by Ivan when he was on a mission in Canada, and Jack himself joined. Captain Burgess still controlled the team. <clears throat> Cypher remained his left hand. Mike Orwell was his right hand. But after for a while, he was replaced by Enrico. Mike was already not the same health as before, all due to smoking and injury after the fights. On March 31st, 2934, Ivan Cypher flew to the CSSO base with a couple of assistants. But that's not all. There was one more person on board the spaceship. This was the same scout. Getting to know the team members was not very successful. The guy was very embarrassed to talk to them, because they were very interested in the new sniper, which the team lacked so much. Fast forward to the conversation, the mercenary entered the captain's office. Captain Birdgas, we're back. Everything was clean at the reserve base. Supplies, soldiers, prototypes, in general. Everything was great, Ivan said, saluting. Everything is going like clockwork. Well done, Ivan. Wait, and who's this behind you? Answered the captain. Sorry, I uh, forgot to introduce you to a new member of our team. His name is, um, Scout. Yes, I, I would like to work for your organization, Scout re replied. Who are you, son? You're definitely not confusing anything, the captain said with a sneer. No, I, I really want to serve you in your organization, sir, and he saluted. <laughs> Cypher, where did you find him? I thought you would find a real fighter, but not this, uh... Ah, it doesn't matter. Well, who are you in your business? A real scout? No, sir. Sniper and assassin. Since the age of seven, I've been able to use a rifle, and you will definitely not find s such as mine, the young man answered. I told you, he's an extraordinary fighter, and he's also the one we need, Ivan said happily. Listen, Sprout, do you have parents? I think at this time, hell, who can join the military organization at that age? When the captain said this, Ivan came up to him and said in his ear, He's an orphan. He never knew his parents. His stepfather betrayed him and gave it to a military colony, so there's no need to put pressure on him. It is very difficult for him to live. Well, Scout, if you really want to join civil security, then I congratulate you. You're accepted, but first, you have to go through several trainings. They will not be too long, twice a day for three hours and so on for the whole week. Until your sniper skills are worked out to perfection, it will be difficult at first, but Eh, you'll get used to it. Take my word for it, replied the captain. Ah, thank you, Captain Burgess. Oh, what do I need to do? Ah, don't hurry, my young fighter. You don't even know our team. You sure do know one thing. The captain looked exactly at Ivan. Oh, I know the one who could defeat me in a matter of seconds. Ivan Cypher, right? Said the scout. Oh, look what you are. I wonder what others will say about him. So, scout, I need your signature. Take these documents, you have to put only one signature and you are accepted, but remember, voluntarily you yourself signed up for this. You have a chance to either yes, or you fly away from here. Well, I'm waiting for an answer, added the captain. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to say that. J give me your documents, the scout signed, but it was not like everyone else's. What is this dauble? It doesn't look like a signature, it looks more like the letter X in a circle, said the captain. This is my signature and I decide what signature I'll have, okay? That's all it takes. Can I meet your team? I think you really want to prove to everyone that you're cool. Really, but remember, you so far, Zero, prove that you're capable of something. Maybe then I can really shake your hand and say, You're accepted, Zero. The captain shook Scout's hand and smiled. Still, you have your own zest. 
It was a test and you did a great job. I knew that you would definitely not whine like a child, but now we're going to introduce you to your new comrades. Ivan, we definitely have to, said the scout. Stop asking me stupid questions. There were already enough problems at the second base, said Ivan, who went to another sector. After this conversation, Scout met with Enrico, Nixie, Mike, and Jack. However, only Enrico was able to communicate with them normally. Attention, Lieutenant Warkvez, Sergeant Orvel, Corporal H, and Private Swift. Meet your new recruits and your crew members. Scout, said the captain. All in turn responded and saluted. Meet our hero, the face of our organization in Italy, who saved the whole world from the hands of an evil organization called Correction 9. His name is Enrico Warkvez. Glad to meet you, Scout, Enrico said, smiled and wanted to shake his hand, but the fighter just walked away from him to the next person. And this, a longtime fighter, has been working for us for more than 12 years. Great combat experience and straight character. Mike Orvel, added the captain. Ah, so you're some kind of rotten. You'd, you would be pumped up. Never mind, and you really have good abs. <laughs> uh, I hope, Mike replied. And this is probably the best assassin in our team, Nixie H. Does his job the best, said the captain. Hmm, nice to meet you, youth, said Nixie. And then Mike came up to Scout and said, I uh, think we'll soon get used to one to one because she is such a bitch. What? What? Is the bitch good? Everyone laughed, except for Scout, and the girl blushed with shame. What did I say? Just some bitch, that's all. The guy got punched in the face by the girl. A moron, just like Mike, she replied. Are you okay? <laughs> well, you give, I mean, have manners, said the captain. And this considered the most mysterious person who I've met. Dangerous as lightning, loud as a storm, and fast as the wind. Meet Jack Swift, or nicknamed Thunder Jack. You know how to make a smile on the face of any person. I see that you are neutral, so hidden in your stony look, in which there are no emotions. For me, your name will not be Scout, but Zero, because everything starts from scratch, like your new life. In civil security is a great choice, Jack replied. That's what I told you about, my young friend, and now it's time to see what you're capable of. Two weeks passed, the team was ready for the next mission, namely the penetration into the enemy headquarters, which was them in the mountains. In general, everything went well. They were not detected. The bottom line was to penetrate and release the hostages who knew useful information about the terrorists. And the team finds out that the terrorists are planning to steal new nuclear technology, but where is it? It is already classified information, but of course it was not an obstacle for the heroes. It turned out that the weapon was stored in Naples in an abandoned metal processing factory. But alas, when they arrived there, no nuclear weapons were found there, and here the heroes were no longer know what to do and who to believe. They thought that the hostages had deceived them, but so far nothing was known, and they were released. Surprisingly, Enrico still did not have love, although he was looking for a girlfriend. But everyone who met him was either prostitutes or dubious personalities. And what would you think? That's right, he found his, his, his love. Though he did not find her, but she found him. And it was Nixie H. Yes, the same girl who didn't treat him very well at first. But after four years, she realized that he was her ideal and that Enrico had been looking for a female partner for a long time. Nixie did not immediately tell him about her feelings, but only hinted. But Enrico did not really understand this and thought it was a joke. Uh, next operation, Nixie decides to talk about her feelings for Enrico. And why on the operation? because they needed to see us reinforcements and the mission was called Bolts and Nuts because the enemies were using robot exoskeleton and thus were dangerous. And this is how it was. Damn, Thunder, what's the matter? Enrico said really into the radio. Sir, their people went around to escape. I suggest you make a trip for them, Jack answered. I see that things are not as good as we thought. <laughs> what kind of detour did they go? Said Enrico. I'm certainly not on time, but uh, it was tough. They went through the old mines where coal is mined, Ivan added. We need to intercept them. Mike, Nixie, follow me. And Enrico and the others went to the detour to intercept the enemies and make them a trap. Within seven minutes, they were already there and Enrico saw that the terrorists were driving a truck. And then our hero used the ATRL 77 rocket launcher. After one missile shot, the truck exploded and literally was on fire. That's the end. Scout, how's the situation? Do you see someone around the perimeter? Enrico said. Uh, no, Enrico. Everyone disappeared somewhere even five minutes ago. Their troops fled around their base. I have only one question. Where are they? Answered the scout over the radio. Hmm, strange. At first they went, they 
They wet us well, but now they're at a loss. By the way, did you find your leader? Mike added. Uh, I came, sir. I want to tell something more interesting for you. He blew up the truck in which our main enemy was, said Jack, who came running. That is, I... What a mess. We had to make him pr prisoner, and again, I made a mistake. Couldn't you tell it before? Enrico said, addressing Jack. Ah, sorry. It's my fault. I noticed how he got into the truck and went around. It came, ar it came out spontaneously, Jack replied. <sighs> Just great. I even called our spaceship here because I'm already freezing, added Mike, who was trembling. <sighs> Calm down, my friend. Now everything will be... Wait, I still don't understand how this could happen. Hey Nixie, you're a silent you're a silent lot today. Usually you like to talk. Are you okay? And answered Enrico. Yeah, just uh it's nothing, she replied. Nice, well it's time to fly away from here. Ivan, this is W. Come back to us and send the ship to us. Mike is already all blue, as you see. Frozen. <laughs> uh joke. In general we're waiting. I'll be right there. What the hell is this? said said the frightened Ivan. What happened? Did you get hurt? said Enrico. Sir, I see two large spaceships. They're white and flying in your direction, the scout added through the radio. Damn it, correction nine. I knew we would meet again. Listen carefully. Follow us through the radar. We'll go down through the mountains, said Enrico. Here they are, Mike said. The ships began to shoot at them, but they managed to hide from the shots, but they did not flee. But on the contrary, awaited until the enemies flew away. By last, the ships landed on the ground and a couple of people in white came out. One of them was in a coat and had a huge CN symbol on the back. The man first sighted and took out a cigarette and began to smoke. After a few seconds, he said, Eh, how bad it must be when a person dies. So even before your eyes, sad. Sad is what to say. C-054, check the territory. You never know. Maybe they decided to make a bait for us. The man threw out the cigarette butt and shouted, Warkvez! I know that you're here, you bitch dog. You know that we won't let you go so easily. Especially me. Because you need to answer for your actions. And you yourself perfectly understand that. Come out, you want to live. Enrico went out with the others. Ah, what a picture. Your friends probably, huh? It'll be very unpleasant if I rock at them all, as you did with my buddies. These people, do they work for you? What were they for you? added Jack. It's a good question. You know, our modest organization requires only the highest technology. We have, of course. They are the best of all. This shit that you use? But it is. Closer to the subject, what do you need all this technology for? Said Enrico. You probably can't hear me as I understand it. Well, well you have to explain in a different way. Ah, you, the cause of all our trouble, and this new prototype will completely erase your worthless organization from the face of the earth. History repeats itself, Mike told himself. Try to destroy us first and then dream about your technologies. Fire! Enrico's team started shooting at them, but the man in the coat was protected by the soldier in white through which he was able to fly away. Another spacecraft was destroyed and this was done by Ivan. <laughs> I'm late. As I understand, it was not very fun. Now I'm not laughing, and in general, where the hell have you been? You should have destroyed their flying crap long ago. And by the way, why do you always disappear when the CN shows up? Enrico said. Just a coincidence, sir. I've been told me a lot about people in white, and they say they love to hide, added the scout who jumped from the building. We'll have to go back to the old one, and said Enrico. Finally, their spaceship arrived. We will meet with them. I can feel it. Enrico, wait. I want to tell you something, Nixie said. Uh-huh. About what exactly? Suddenly, everyone fell silent. Do not be silent, speak as it is. Something happened, answered Enrico. I just want to say that we have known each other for so many years, how many good memories and events we've had together. How many missions, how many difficulties, and this united us. I thought you were a most self-confident and strange person, but now I realize that you were not. Over this year, over the years, I realized that you were my ideal and I love you, answered Nixie shyly. Nixie, I... Uh, couldn't even think that you liked me. But I didn't even expect that, Ivan added. <laughs> I knew that this would happen, but did not pay attention to it because it's not my business, said Jack. Again, you will let down your tears. Well, come on. As much as possible, Mike said with a pitch. You can say whatever you want. I already know, know what you'll say, she said. Enrico came up and took her hand and said, And here you are wrong, my dear Nixie. I would like to. Before he had time to speak, she immediately kissed him. Jack and Sal just looked at it. 
Well, Mike and I went to the spaceship. Bah, disgusting, Mike muttered to himself. Let, let's go, old friend. I myself cannot stand it, added Ivan. So that's why you were so shy. Because you wanted to confess your feelings to me and it was so hard to tell? You're not 18. For me, these words were simple, but to pronounce them to you, it was the most difficult thing that I could imagine. Words can mean a lot of things. Because of one sweet word, a person can feel pleasant. But if this word is evil, then the same person can be rude to you too. You do not need to be afraid of words, but you need to use them correctly. You need to think about their meaning and be able to influence the person with them, added Jack. Your truth, if you want to speak, then do not delay, just speak as it is, said Enrico. Doesn't that make sense? We speak as we see fit rather than listening to the thoughts of others. That's what I think, said Scout. Well, noticed. Well, nothing can be done about it. We are simple people, so because of people like us, Others have problems, said Enrico. Are you talking about CN? <laughs> Originally thinking, answered Jack, after this mission had an unexpected confession. The team returned to headquarters, and of course the captain was surprised that CN had started doing something dangerous to humanity again. And this time they came up with a plan to find their main headquarters. So our scouts found the place where our enemies were recently, and in order to find their main lair came up with a plan. Enrico, you have to get unnoticed to their camp and find a way to get to the main headquarters. Of course, you will understand not yourself, but with your team. I'll tell you the rest along the way. Is everything clear? said the captain. Yes, sir. Would you like something else? answered Enrico. No, nothing. Just get ready, because this will be, be a quiet mission. Pass it on to the others. Free. Everything was very fast but smooth. Enrico and his colleagues made their way into the enemy camp, and soon they imperceptibly climbed into the different trucks and waited until they go to the main headquarters of CN. And after a while, the trucks started up and drove to the headquarters. Three hours later, the team found themselves in an area that was fenced in by huge concrete walls 10 meters high. On the territory itself, there were several small buildings that were connected to the largest building. It was night. The team moved deeper and deeper. They quietly make their way into the main building, but in order to check as many rooms as possible, they had to split up in two. Enrico went with Ivan. Their task was not simple and very dangerous, to climb through the ventilation ducts and look for a way into the main room of the command center. Everything was successful. The main room was found and the heroes started talking here. Ah, <sighs> so we came. Just quietly, little can happen. Maybe they have an alarm here. Enrico threw a smoke bomb on the floor in the end. No traps are found. Damn, I wasted a grenade. Let's get out of here, said Ivan. They got out of the ventilation and jumped. It's so quiet here, there are no guards. It doesn't look like them. So now listen to me very carefully. Cover me while I look for something here, and then that can give us useful information about their new technology, said Enrico. Okay, damn, there is really no one here. Why should we be quiet? Because, Ivan, this is a secret mission, you know. Oops, I think I found something. Take a look. The guy showed him the files with information. You did it quickly, so what's there? Ivan said. Hmm, I don't understand anything. Nuclear missiles, some kind of core, metal parts, micro circuits. Do you want to create a rocket launcher? He said in surprise. You're wrong, W. Look what form these parts are. This is clearly not an insulation. It looks like a robot. But... Where is this good kept? answered Ivan. Here you need to dig more. I will tell there to meet with us. By the way, why are you wearing a closed helmet? Are you not stuffy in it? said Enrico, holding the radio in his hands. This is so for extreme in situations. Just a lot of things happened during this time. You understand me? He did not answer Ivan's words. This is Lieutenant Warfez. I order everyone to leave the building and wait for my orders, he said into the radio. In the meantime, let's look for something else. If it's a flash drive or a disk, take it right away. Understand, Cypher. They searched almost the entire room, and at one point, the same man in a white coat entered the room. Of course, they managed to hide and listen to everything that the man said to his interlocutor. What are you, dunce? Even normal turbines cannot find. I told you to find new and whole turbines. What do you think? Forgive me, Hermes, but we cannot find new ones. We, should, we took everything that was, answered another person. Great, now we need to find someone back in search of new parts. Although, from, from I am a fool, how could I not have guessed at once? Of course, America. 
I have acquaintances people who can be trusted, and they have a lot of things in their arsenal, said Hermes. Are they also our allies of the raised task force? Hermes took the other by the neck and lifted up. Are you some sort of stupid? Or are you maybe an idiot? This is not fucking raise. Navy would say that, so will security are our friends? Of course not. This is Correction 9, and yes, we have more than one headquarters for the whole world. Well, so far only in America and here, but soon, the world will be completely ours. I understand, sir. What will be your instructions? Hexagon, you can go, but tell Irax to come to my hangar. I have questions for him, Hermes told him. After the departure of his subordinate, the man took out a small disc from under the table and then left himself. Hermes? Hexagon? What are these stupid names? Ivan said to himself. He took some kind of disc, so still from under the table, which means that it's valuable to him. A thousand devils! It was necessary to think logically about a secret stash, said Enrico. I think it's time for us to get out of here. We will find them anyway, but if we take the army and suddenly attack them, then it will be a victory for a hundred pounds. What do you think about that? Ivan, you're right. There is no need to risk your friends and best warriors once again. We'll retreat, but we'll be back here for sure. The heroes returned to the CS headquarters and told the captain about the plans of their enemies, but then an accident happened. Captain Burgess died of a heart attack, and it was not CN, but poor health. Then the election to the place of the captain of civil security began. Initially, Mike wanted to become the deputy leader, but now he forgot that the right hand of the captain was Enrico. Moreover, people trusted him more because he brought his honesty and righteousness. He is a hero, but Enrico did not disregard him. He appointed Mike to be the second deputy, and after Ivan, of course. There was a funeral. The whole army gathered and saluted their captain. This ceremony was held at the cemetery named after the heroes of civil security. A week passed. The next mission began and Enrico decided to make take a team and more than a hundred infantrymen to destroy several CN camps. Why not the main headquarters? Because Ivan was in a hurry with his thoughts. And this time, the territory was guarded by several combat robots with fire weapons. And here they lost again. The army had not had any fire resistant armor but standard armor with an aggressive look. The operation took place for three hours, almost without stopping. Roar, noise, explosions, shouts, fire. Everything is going fine until the assistance to the protagonist reported the situation. A curse, attention to all units. I order you to destroy all CN soldiers. And then he intercepted the enemy signal. These fucking enemies must be destroyed. Continue the assault, said the unknown man. The situation is bad. Scout, tell the snipers to get ready f to shoot those bastards, because now it'll be really not. Because now it's gonna be really hot. Enrico said to him through the radio. Understood, he replied. Jack suddenly got in touch. Thunder, something happened. Damn, sorry, sir. Mike died. The injury was fatal. I'm sorry, Jack answered. Now everything is really bad. Thunder, order your detachment to destroy the enemy equipment. It is the reason for the destruction of our troops, he said on the radio. Got it, Enrico. The conversation on the radio ended. Nixie, where the hell is Ivan? He said he said that he was in a camp under D, and that is several kilometers from us, she replied. This cipher, why does he always do his own thing? Enrico muttered to himself. Scout again? What have you got there? Everything is very bad. Our people are getting kill being killed one by one. They seem to have very powerful weapons. What will you order us to do? answered the scout through the radio. Get out of there. Tell the others to retreat immediately. This is an order. Enrico replied with fury. You heard the captain. You need to get out of here, said the sniper, and the conversation ended. Enrico, look. They're already here, Nixie shouted, firing her double-barreled shotgun. Run, I'll cover, he said. The hero shot at them and did not even run back. He did not even spare everyone of whom he saw, but killed at the same place. And at one point, there was silence, but then a rumble was heard nearby. CN blew up their transport. No, Ivan, Ivan, what? Would you fail to answer me? He said into the radio, which was already to break in his hands. I hear W. I'm sorry. I know what happened, and I know I did not, did not as go as planned, but we destroyed the camps number D, and I, but Ivan was interrupted by Enrico. Because of you, we have lost tanks and armored vehicles. What do you think? Who do you think for for yourself? No, Enrico, for the future of Italy and the whole world. 
and so I went there to destroy the last camp. After all, that was already their most dangerous technique. Sorry, that was wrong, Ivan answered. All is well for now, but our transport was blown to pieces by missiles. Can you arrive in about four or five minutes? No problem, friend. I can already see you. Two large trucks and armored personnel carrying carrier drove up to him. Kept you waiting, huh? Ivan said happily. You can't even imagine how. Go ahead. We still need to take our people. Order the squad to go to point B4, answered Enrico. I understand. Demiso, go to B4, Ivan ordered the driver. Yes, and they drove off. When they got there, the first person to get out of the transport was Enrico, followed by three armed soldiers. In just a few seconds, soldiers and his main team fled to their transport. Damn it, Scout! What was there? It's like the dogs have gnawed you, said Enrico. It was scary. We sat on the roof of the building, waiting for them to come out of cover, and then suddenly, BAM! We were thrown through the roof to the ground, and then we met with Jack. He said that Mike was dead, and then we were even more scared, said one of the wounded snipers. No, it's not here. You're not your mother's children. You're soldiers. Wait for me here. I'll come right now. Enrico ran to point B3 where Nixie was, but suddenly she appeared right on his way. Nixie! God! I thought you were still on the B3. The radar must be broken. You're a brave woman. I didn't want to leave you because without you I feel uncomfortable. With you I'm more comfortable. She hugged him. Some of the CS people were laughing and happy about it. Surprisingly, Scout was not even happy. He did not smile, as if he had no time for it. Fortunately, the enemies could not find them, because Ivan knew the path through which no one had yet traveled and in which it was safe. A few hours later, the team and part of the civil security troops arrived at the base, and the main character had a conversation with members of his team. He often lost his mood due to conflicts with France and because of eternal operations and wars. But still, there was a way out. Love. He loved Nixie and she loved him, through which it was a little easier for him to perceive people after difficult missions. Day, April 22nd, 2934, Enrico and his team went to the place where every year, civil security, people from all over the world gathered, where they held the negotiations and gatherings. An interesting fact, all the training camp, only camp, only the captains, and no one else could speak, but the team members could speak only with the general himself gave permission for this, and they gathered there because of the same situation. Correction 9. And so, in one large room gathered eight CS teams from all over the world. General, where is it for so long, Captain Burgess and his crew, said the captain of the American team. They were already here, answered the general, and so it was, the team entered, but the members of CS did not see Burgess, and all pointed their weapons at the heroes. To stand and not move, and now as the question is, where is your captain Quentin Burgess, said the team captain from Germany. He died of a heart attack. And now I'm the captain," said Enrico. <laughs> look how long, yeah, look how young you are. Please tell me who you are, because I think I must have forgotten such a guy like you," said the mustachio team captain from Ukraine with funny accent. So, 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 who I see? So it's Ivan. You haven't seen each other for a long time, old assistant. How do you work for the Italians? But Ivan did not answer. Ah, I remember him. The legendary hero of Italy saved the whole world from nuclear weapons. Correction 9, added the general. Everyone was quiet at his words. Exactly. You correctly thought this is it. I and Enrico worked best, and this is my team. I have not been working for the civil security for a long time, but I know that this is my home, my meaning of life, my favorite job. Ah, you've become more mature. We remember you as a youngster. It's an honor to meet you. The captain of China made a new slope in front of him. Workvis, legends about you are already reaching us, said the captain of the team from America, who was holding a cigar in his lips. Handsome, what can I say? He had such a courageous face, said the team captain from France. Absolutely everyone started talking about him. The pistol shot through. It was the general who fired. Enough! These are serious negotiations and some useless children's conversation. Enrico Warkvis, what reason did you have to gather everyone here, said the general. This is our Captain Burgess, wanted to collect you. It's about correction nine, he replied. Ah, I knew that this day would come. Well, tell me, what's the matter? They are creating the next prototype of weapons, but this time it's very serious. A giant robot that has more than four nuclear missiles and it can release from them from anywhere. Evidence, we cannot trust empty words. Here we found this at the headquarters of CN. The prototype uses the most durable flame-retarded metal, tungsten, but this is only part of the problem. 
They found out about our railgun technology, and in the end, they created two large railguns, and Sien wants to replace them on the robot arms. And if this monster fires a shot, Noriko showed a hologram where the robot's drawing was. He will destroy everything in its path. The panic began. Everyone began to talk. Calm, calm. General, how are we to destroy that? It includes only the most resistant material and spare parts. Even if we use nuclear weapons, we can destroy both him and part of the country. If we withstand it, then it will be the end of the world, said the team captain from Africa. Bah! Don't be cowards. We are civil security. We are one big family and will not let these creatures devastate the planet. Ordinary people don't come in here, and I'm sure you're not. If we unite Tian, we'll just kneel before us and we'll celebrate them for everything. Who for? Enrico said at first. They were silent, but after... I am for. The hero tells the truth, and we are soldiers and we protect the civilians, added the team captain from America. Then we are too. We are not afraid of them. They only know how to run away and steal technology. Bah, nasty rats, said the team captain from Russia with a cigarette in his mouth. We do. They only scare, but who are the real cowards? This is exactly the stench, said the team captain from Ukraine. I did not think that I would say this, but I am ready to sacrifice myself for the sake of the lives of others. We are ready, added the team captain of Germany. Always ready to help you, Mr. Warkvez, said the captain of the team from China, who dodged along with his subordinates. Even the best people require ordinary help, but one day they will help you in the most difficult moment. I am ready to help you, Enrico, said the cap team captain from France. I like your heroism, Warkvez. You are a fearless soldier who is ready to protect others for the sake of harmony and peace. You plan to do what we do. Therefore, we are with you, added the team captain from Africa. All in favor, so the decision has been made to join forces against the forces of Correction 9. But it is still not clear to me who is in your main detachment, said the general. The first, Ivan Cipher, codenamed Cipher. The second, next to H, codenamed NH. The next, Jack Swift or Thunderjack. And the last one, Zero. And what is his name? He looks kind of shy at first glance, said the captain of France. I don't have a name. I only live to kill people for their actions, said Scout epically. Look, General, he broke the rules. Members of civil security are not allowed. The captain of Russia was interrupted. Be silent. I decide what to say to whom. Continue, said the General. Another thing I want to say, do you know who Herms is? Everyone fell silent. No? Well, then listen, he's the main leader of CN, and that is, our main goal is to kill him. But before that, get all the information from him, Enrico added. If it comes to that, then I declare Operation Correction 9 open, the General said. And it all began. On April 25th, the day, the Civil Security Army gathered near the CN headquarters. They were ready to attack. One, two, three. They ran to headquarters. Explosion, noise, shots, everything was like the classics. The forces of Civil Security were so powerful that even the equipment of the enemies could not resist them. And now, the moment has come when Enrico will once again face a leader of CN. And it was Herms. But Enrico's team was ambushed. <laughs> well, I did not expect that you would take Warkvez's help with you. I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time to fight you. Herms punched him in the face. He sat blood on the ground. <laughs> this is all he can do, Enrico said with contempt. If you really do not believe in my power, then look at this. Assistant, take this bitch and drag her to me. Now, Warkvez, this is where the fun really begins. Herms loaded his pistol and began to giggle with an evil laugh. Don't you dare touch her. Ugh. I'll shoot you in the fucking head, he said furiously. Enrico, those were the best days with you. Goodbye, Nixie added. No, no, zero, zero. Damnation, where are you? Don't do it, said the flustered Enrico. Well, since this is the case, and while there's a chance her last words to her, Herm said, holding the pistol near her head. Nixie, I, I love you. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. I just... I thought that I was doing everything right, but I was wrong. I'll, I will love you. Farewell, my beloved Enrico. I love you. From these words, the heart pounded the main character very quickly. His eyes trembled and his teeth clenched. Shot. Herms killed Nixie H. It was in front of all the heroes. No! You'll die, you fucking brute. I hate you, you fucking devil. Enrico shouted furiously. 
Then the hero and his friends began a firefight, and only did the scout come to the rescue. But the onslaught of enemies was very great, and the leaders was protected by the largest fighters of Sien. We, we need to retreat. There are a lot of them. We'll not survive, Ivan shouted in shooting. I'm not leaving. They killed Nixie. Ugh! Enrico shouted. Scout aimed at, at Herms to kill him because of the thought of Jack's words. He missed and almost hit him in the throat. But after that, he survived and ordered his men to use the rocket launcher. Shot. The rocket flies and almost hit him. The scout was on top and therefore, after the fall, he had a serious fracture of his leg. He could not walk and run, only shoot. And when he was ready to die from the wounds of his enemies, he uttered the last words, Sir, I'm afraid I won't help you. I'll try to stop them, and you run, said Scout with a deep breath. Not that, no. You Now you're still, but you're very young. It's too early for you to leave this world, said Enrico. Mark my words, I will never betray civil security. This is my home, and the last thing I want to tell you, you for me were like a second father. Only you loved me like a son. It's a pity fate it turned out that way. No, zero, zero, said Enrico when Ivan and Jack held him and took him away from the headquarters of CN. Enrico said that the rest of the survivors retreated. Almost all Silver Security members died at the hands of the Correction 9. There were pools of blood everywhere, dead bodies and destroyed equipment. It was a failure, Civil Security lost, and two hours later, the enemies found the main headquarters of CN and destroyed it with nuclear missiles, UBR. After this defeat, a week passed, and Enrico, Ivan, and Jack were at the reserve headquarters of civil security, where soldiers were waiting for them, who saluted them at every meeting. The team was at a main headquarters control center, watching the news and starting a conversation. Everything is lost. We've lost everything. The army, the equipment, the headquarters, our friends. How could this happen? Why and how could they find us? Enrico said. We've not lost everything yet. Because, and then there was a very bad news on TV. This is Channel 17 News. Again, I am its host, Roberto Leros. Today, the UN decided to ban a military organization, civil security, and all countries of the world. What? It, it cannot be, but how? said surprised Ivan. CN will be closed forever. No one else has the right to deal with it. If there is any prison, he will be sent to prison for at least 10 years. You probably know that the secret base, CN, CS is in Naples, were destroyed by another unknown organization, which means that they could not, and in principle, cannot protect themselves. I am already talking about the protection of citizens. This is some kind of nonsense. Why would- why? Because of some failure? We're deprived of the right to be a member of CS? said Jack. Enrico, we need to do something. We can't just fold our hands and surrender. And you, you, and you understand that yourself. What are your ideas? added Ivan. There was a slight silence at, and at one point he said, We will revive the name of civil security again and we will see Correction 9 soon. I'm sure of it.